Burdick have a um, local government seminar that I go to every year. So that keeps up on changes with GAP and changes that the auditors are going to be looking for when they come in for the year. What size budgets have you worked with, and what do you find challenging about budgeting? So I've worked with the county's budget, and currently we are at the, the all fund at $33 million. The general you, you fund talked about, I'm sorry, you already talked about the yes. challenge with having extra net proceeds on a one-time basis, yes. right? Yes. What other challenges do you find with budgeting? Making sure that... Um, departments are conveying exactly what they need and um, making sure that we move forward with that so they have the tools to do their jobs. Okay. And what are the key elements to successful financial planning and budgeting? So you're I think one of the key elements is um, having your chart of accounts together and organized so that you have like um, expenditures and revenues together and so that you can have a clear picture of where your revenues are coming in, where your expenses are going out. Okay. What measures do you use to assess an organization's financial performance? I believe you need to look at your budget, but you also need to look at cash um, and fund balances. I believe that that's how the county got into the severe financial emergency it did is the personnel that was here were not looking, they were looking at their budget, which a budget is an estimate, they were not looking at cash. The, um, at the time, bank reconciliations were not being done in a timely manner. Um, so um, withdrawals were going out of the bank, such as for um, our workers' comp, but they weren't being recorded in the general ledger. So, so that we ensure that every, um, such as payroll, people are being paid correctly, holiday pay or um, anything like that. And then with um, AP, just making sure that the expenditures are a valid expenditure. So, I told you there were 22 questions, there weren't. Oh, no. <laughs> but um, we now have the opportunity for the board to ask candidates specific questions. Okay. So, any, it says committee members, so this is, uh, you're the hiring committee now. So, here, if you have any questions for Ms. Eldridge, now the opportunity to ask them. How do you feel your communication with other governmental agencies? is when you stand up in front of them and speak because that's an important part of your job and how you come across and you feel like you're strong, weak. Badly. Well, I haven't done it a whole lot. Um, I have do, been doing it more. Actually, I went two weeks ago and did a presentation in front of the legislator, legislative committee and I wouldn't say I'm strong. I wouldn't say that I'm at the bottom. I'm probably in the middle. Like I said, I haven't done it a lot, but I don't have a fear of it. And I, I think I, as I go on, I think I can improve. I found you've improved. That was going to be my next question. Do you think you can, uh, once you get more of a practice at it, you'll get better? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I feel, I don't know if you guys, I feel like I have improved talking with you guys when when I have sat in the finance director chair. I, I feel like I have. I have one. Okay. Um, 
I know that you've been with the county since 1991. Um, you, I think you were in the road department and had just moved over when I came on board and we were in severe financial emergency. So that's a long time. Um, I know that our present finance director received uh, uh, and was able to put put letters after her name in regards to the finance and others. So the time that you've been here and the opportunities that you've had, what have you done? And if you haven't, why didn't you? So um, I have not furthered my education. I, I take as many training opportunities as I can. Um, probably, well, life happens. Um, when I first started, I had young kids. I didn't, and now I think back and I should have taken the time. I had three young kids. I didn't take the time to further my education. Um, then as I progressed and got promoted, again, I just didn't take the time. And I, like I said, I take advantage as many trainings as I can to improve myself, but no, I haven't furthered my education. Thank you. I have a question, Delaney. Uh, yeah. You were given this position. Uh, obviously, then you would have to fill your position. Would you look to do that internally or go externally or, or have you thought through, okay, now I'm going to be tasked with um, going with me? Uh, just curious. So, my plan, I thought about this, my plan would be to advertise for not a chief deputy because I don't believe that there's anyone internally or externally that could walk in and be a chief deputy, the chief deputy finance director immediately. I would hope to advertise and um, fill a, a finance analyst as my previous position was. And I believe I could get someone in there to um, to fill that position until they, and then, you know, go from there. Do you think it's necessary to hire another person in your life? Absolutely. Um, there's just, um, I know myself just having, you have a finance director doing her job, me doing my job, I know the time and work I put in, so yeah, you would have to fill that position just to keep keep the county where we're at, keep, it, keep everything in, in the order that it's at and going strong. I think the reason I ask that is because you have three competent employees that are in that office. Elizabeth did four or five carried a lot of hats. You'll be strictly carrying mm -hmm. the finance hat. You'll still be in charge of your, your your office and you'll still be working with the county manager. So, because I've always budget your conscious yes, trying absolutely. to uh, yes. eliminate jobs or, or trying to run as, as I, small I as you can. I still just think there is, there's there's a lot to, to it to, to keep budget where it's at, to, to um, Keep so that you're ready for audit. There, there's a, there's, there's a lot of um, things going on that I believe you would still need, still need that position. Maybe just not at that higher of where I'm at currently. Well, you know the office better than I do, so I accept that answer. That, yeah. If, if I may, can I have one more? Which, listening to this, could you, would you be able to explain the differences? Would you explain the differences between where you're at now? and the actual duties of the finance director, as you see it? Well, this one wore a lot of hats. So while she was wearing all those hats, I was, I felt like I was doing the day to day. Um, but there's financial reporting that um, I did have not completely done. There's the, so with the annual um, audit, there's the statistical part I have never done. There's, 
there's many things that Elizabeth currently does that I would have to step into, but then somebody would have to take that, that, because I, I mean, I, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna work, you know, 80 hours a week. I will, I, so that's why you would need that extra person, or that addition, you know, to fill my position. Does, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. Any other questions from the commission? That would be a good time. So, Ms. Eldridge, if selected for this position, what are your salary expectations? Well, <laughs> I was going to kind of wait until if I was selected. Um, I have, I've looked at the pay scale. Um, I've kind of compared myself to past recent hires. Um, I would... Um, oh, I have it on here. You know, um, uh, I would want to be as, I would hope to be a step five to six on the scale. What is your salary now? Um, 74. And step, uh, Entry level, I think we looked at yesterday, was 92 to 116. Yes, and we'll have an agenda item come up to discuss this more fully. Yeah, but I'm but kind of like to hear the answer. You're correct. 92 to 116. Yeah. So you should be elevated in pay, don't get me wrong, that's yeah. for sure. But where does it fall and the opportunity as you advance and get more and more steps yeah. and you, you get more and more increases? Yeah. Because and you are going up in salary yeah. quite a bit to, to begin with. That's, that's why that question is asked. I understand all that. Okay. Good. Good. And then, uh, Ms. Eldridge, if selected for this position, when are you available to start? Uh, two o'clock. Just kidding. Yeah. Um, immediately, I mean, obviously, um, there would be the transition um, from now until <coughs> when Elizabeth um, actually leaves. And then the recruitment process, but I can, yeah, start immediately. I've actually had the conversation with Elizabeth. But asked her how I should put that if, you know, immediately or or when she retires and she said immediately. Okay. And then so, then, yeah. That's good. On the same page. Okay. Um, and just a second, I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask the committee, the commission questions, okay? But if, if, I, if you had a 20-second sales pitch of why you think you're the best candidate out there, that, or as opposed to our other applicants, why, you, why this board should choose you for the, for the counties to trust the county's finances? Because I can walk out of this room and start. I, there's not going to be a transition time of no, getting to know departments, getting to know the county. I have the knowledge, I have the history, I have the experience. Do you have any questions for the board? I don't, because I know. Yeah, I I okay. <laughs> Great. Well, if we can. Um... I just, um, I guess what I, uh, maybe not a question as much as a statement. Um, my family's in my blood, in my soul. I, I've given county my years. They've been good to me, but I feel like I've been very good to them, and I think I could be um, a great asset as a finance director. Okay, well, thank you very much. If you want to just step outside okay. here, I'm going to give the board a little bit of time to fill out a couple other um, weighted questions in your packet there. This is more sub subjectively for you guys to, to grade in there about the presentation. And then I'll give you five minutes and I'll go get this work. On this, uh, starting with page six, we did the evaluations and asked the questions up to page five. And then you've got part eight, nine, and ten on page six. Do we 
need to fill that one out? Yes, I'm asking you to um, evaluate her, her presentation based on these uh, areas and grade her appropriately. And so, like on item seven, and selected what the uh, where's your salary? Excuse oh, that thing. on page six, yeah, Mr. Chairman, those two are those two questions are not graded. Okay, that's just for information. To the board. Okay. She answered me, I had. <laughs> Did you see the other questions, though, on page uh, seven? Page seven, yeah, it's all of it. What do you want to do with it? I would like you to go through and grade the presentation based on that objective criteria. And enter that number and add that number to the number we have. Correct. Okay. Please. Yeah. There's, a, there's about four more questions. Exactly. Five more questions. By the way, I scored you very high when you did yours. I'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> How's that working out for you? <laughs> Actually, better than I thought. Oh, good. Good. This is just a, it's a yeah, it's it's public true. interviews are tough. These are tough. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <sighs> Five pages. I want to make sure that nobody gets shortchanged. Correct. And so then we uh, created number seven, page seven, and graded page eight. Was there any other grades that we needed to do? Uh, no. Okay, so we add so everything up through eight. Yeah, it should be 20 questions total. Okay, that's one. Okay, page six. Page seven. Should be 100 points total. We're grading on 20 questions. Only questions you're not grading are number 16 and 17, which were just for information. And on the next interview, I'll put those separate. Sheet for this. Right. Are we writing the score on here? You 
Let's do that right this way. Ms. Workman, thank you for coming all the way out here for a, an interview. Um, the board is the interviewing committee. There are four of the five board members here today. They are the one who will be grading the, the interview. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. They're going to be listening. I'll give them some time to kind of write down their notes and get them grade. And then uh, we'll have a little bit of um, open dialogue towards the end, and I'll open it up for the board to ask any specific follow-up questions okay. uh, based on your answers. And, you know, before we start, would you tell us just a little bit about where you, um, how it is you got here? Where did you just come in from? I came in from Georgetown, Kentucky. Um, I've lived in Midway slash Georgetown all my life. Um, and, yeah, it was, a, it was a lovely ride here. It was late when I got here. I got here at 4 a.m. the other night. And I was like, oh, I'm so tired. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep or anything because, yeah, the schedule's different when you're three hours off. But um, I do accounting for an office supply company and have done accounting for manufacturing. Great. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your professional background and um, try to limit it to three minutes. Okay. Um, I graduated from college with a bachelor's in business management and accounting. Um, I went straight to work for Toyota Shisho, which is a large company that does um, stuff for Toyota, their sister company. And then when that auditing job was over, they suggested that I go get Jim Meadows, and that was an industrial recycling company for Toyota as well. Um, they do all the, so Toyota likes to say there are no, no trash, no waste, but the truth is, Green Metals would take their trash and waste and recycle it or move, move it along. We had um, 17 divisions, 17 departments. <coughs> you had to deal with managers at every level. You had to deal with um, a variety of incoming and outgoing shipments. You had to deal with the sales side, and all, all, all of it. <laughs> Cost accounting. And then um, I became the staff accountant there and proceeded to learn everything I could in that position. Where we did the financial statements, the balance sheets, we did budgets, we had to do variances once a month and turn those into all level of management and they had to meet their budgets and be within our guidelines. We had to be very careful how we departmentalized things because it affected their budgets and affected how they did their business. And when I was done learning, <laughs> I, um, talked to my financial controller at the time and said, you know, where do I go next? How do I keep growing? How do I keep learning? And she said, I got nothing here. I got no suggestions. So actually she uh, assisted me in putting a resume together and I went outside the company to a company called First Office Supply and they did the office supplies for Green Metals. So I had that relationship with the salespeople and the accounting people there and moved into that position as the financial controller. After I got there and was there like a year, the um, owner actually passed away and I had to learn all the financials and all the accounting and do like everything that she was doing plus some without any training or knowledge. But prior to her passing, she was, when I arrived, she was 18 months behind on financials and had filed for extensions and different things on her taxes. So I caught her up on all that within three to six months by learning the software she was using. She was trying to go to QuickBooks but had another software that did accounting and she was kind of in between the phase. So um, yeah, I got her caught up and I learned her just the software that they had and I didn't move her to QuickBooks because it was so much cheaper just to use the one software instead of two. 
And after that, I learned everything she was doing when she passed. And then the company was owned by trust. So, if you know anything about trust, <laughs> you know they don't like business, and they don't like to run a business, and they don't want to run a business. So the first thing we had to do was figure out how to sell the company. And I worked with all levels of management, uh, the president and the trust and the um, board of directors to find a company that would keep the name and keep the industry in the same area because the first name had been there again and again since two. And uh, yeah, they're kind of strong in the community. So we worked really, really hard to find another company that would buy us and let us still work under Hearst. Well, the problem with that is when a bigger company gobbles you up, they already have financial people and they already have financial controllers. So they want to change me into an operations position, which is not a bad thing, but it's not my career goal. I don't want to do operations on a regular basis. I want to stay in the accounting industry. Great. Was that less confusing? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Our room number two. Why is Wyoming County attractive to you when compared to other like counties and agencies? And what is your reason for wanting to leave your current employment and work for our agency? Okay, well, current employment, I guess I already explained, so they're just kind of trying to, they're phasing me out because of the operations position. Um, White Pine County was attractive because of the size of the thing. Um, you guys are a big county, but you have little small cities within, and I grew up in a small city. Um, so it's comfortable, it's homey. What are your future professional goals? What steps do you plan to meet those goals? And where do you see your be in five years from now? Um, five years from now, I'd like to have my CPA. I planned that when I moved to Hearst, but with circumstances of the pandemic and the owner passing, and I didn't really have time to study, I am approved by the Kentucky State Board to step for my CPA exams, and I've actually taken two and scored like 72 out of 75 on each one of those. But I haven't gone back to go like study harder and get into those as yet. But in the next five years, I'd like to have that accomplished. Okay, what are your future professional goals? Where do you want to be after you get your CPA? I just want to be in one spot. I would like a director of finance or controller position. I would um, like to settle into something that I'm going to be able to retire from, just long term. Kind of stick with one profession and stay in that spot. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about leadership and relationships, just for a second, because this is a department head position. Right? right. So can you describe the role of the finance director and the ideal working arrangements that you would like to have in that role between the county manager and the board of county commissioners? I, I think it's a personality and a relationship is important with every role that you take in every career. Um, as the financial control, as the controller in a new position in different businesses, you had to learn the people, and you had to learn what you were looking for and what they were looking for, and you had to be objective and into the way you thought versus the way they thought. And I think it's the same thing coming into this role. I have to come into it with an open mind, and I have to ask you to have an open mind <laughs> so that we can negotiate and do the best things for the county. Can you describe the ideal working arrangements you'd like to see between this finance director position and other elected officials and other department heads? Not just the board and myself, but the other departments. Okay. I think that has to be a close working relationship where we understand each other's budgets and goals so that we can help direct money on the right path in the right sections and the right departments in order to get things accomplished and completed in timely manners. Uh, what steps would you take to achieve that? I guess coming into the community and just learning people, um, I would definitely have to be involved in just getting to know people and what they're interested in and what the county needs are versus what the people needs are. 